What's up guys, you're listening to another episode of Selling on Amazon with Andy Isom. I hate to break it to you, but you are not providing any value and that's why you're not growing. Over the past three years now, I have reviewed dozens. I wanted to say hundreds, but if I legitimately had to give an honest answer, I'd probably say I've reviewed 170, maybe 180 brands. So sellers, their listings, the products that they're selling that I have personally looked at, reviewed, assessed, like that type of thing. So dozens is what I'm going with. I have reviewed dozens of brands. I've seen their sales. I've seen their conversion rates. I've seen their ads. I've seen their reviews. I've seen their photos, right? I've looked over all of their stuff. The number one reason why people struggle to grow their brands or increase sales of their product, get more reviews, all the things that right that help you grow your brand. The number one reason is that they are not providing any value. They are not adding any significant value to their marketplace. Amazon can be as easy or as complex as you want it to be. It can be as simple as going to alibaba.com. Forget Jungle Scout. Forget Jungle Scout for a second. You could just go to alibaba.com Type in the most random thing. In fact, if you wanted to not even type in a random thing, you could just browse Alibaba and see what's on the main home screen. Go to Alibaba, see what's on the main home screen. In fact, let's do it right here really quickly. You could go right here to the Alibaba.com home screen. Forget even typing anything in. Let's just like scroll and look here at what's down here. New arrivals, view more. This is how easy and simple selling stuff on Amazon really can be. You don't got to spend time doing product research. You don't got to spend time looking on Jungle Scout. You literally pull up here, go to Alibaba. Heck, don't even think about what you want to sell. Just scroll and see what catches your attention and say custom printed quick drying golf towel with grommet set. Boom. Click right there. What is this? I'm trying to look at these other photos. Okay. There you go. It's a set or you can pick out different colors. Boom. You go like this. It says $1.75 for 10 to 499 pieces. You click contact supplier, say, Hey, I'd like to order, I don't know, maybe a hundred, 200 pieces. So that'll cost you like 175 bucks to maybe 300 bucks. Order that, pay for shipping, put it in just some generic packaging. I don't know. Like don't even bother with a brand name. Just like leave it blank. Don't even put a brand name on it and throw it up on Amazon and start selling. That's it. Like literally guys, I'm not joking. You could realistically launch your brand and your products on Amazon in about 48 hours. Now the product's not going to get there in 48 hours. Like let's not, let's not be delusional there. It's going to take some time to ship. But guys, if you're just selling something that's not customized, like I don't even customize this. I just order it. And I can even tell them, ship at Air Express. They probably already have this on hand. It'll get to your house in five to seven days. It'll get to Amazon in five to seven days. Ship it straight to Amazon if you want. In five to seven days, you could have a product selling on Amazon. Now, you know, for most people, right, who are doing it the right way, <laughs> it takes about six to eight months or more, depending on, right, the complexity of the product and how much time they're spending. Five to seven days, guys, you could legitimately be selling something on Amazon. But if I were to buy this golf towel right here, right? And not do, do nothing to it. Nothing, no branding, no customization, literally just order these different colors, throw them on Amazon and start selling. What value am I adding to the marketplace? None. I'm adding no value to the marketplace. In fact, let's just do something here really quickly. Let's go to, I'm going to do a new incognito window. Go to amazon.com. Okay. Amazon.com. Let's do a uh, plain golf towels. Looky there. <laughs> the very first result. Does this Look familiar to anyone else? Does this look familiar to you guys? But I pulled up golf towels that look exactly like the golf towels on Alibaba. And just to recap, the golf towels on Alibaba are just plain waffle, purple, yellow, green, and it has a little hole with a carabiner in it. And then I went to Amazon and I typed in plain golf towel. I probably could have typed in just golf towel, but this is literally, this is almost exact. The only difference is the grommet, the hole is in the center of the towel and not in the corner. That's the only difference. $11.99 they're selling this for. You can buy it on Alibaba for $1.75. So could you realistically sell this golf towel on Amazon? Yeah, probably. Let me go back and see what other golf towels. There was other ones that literally looked exactly the same. I got to keep pressing back. Okay. Like there's a bunch here. Look at this one. Mosumi looks exactly the same. $9.99. They're a little bit cheaper. So I'd probably buy that one because it looks exactly like this vividly one. Oh, that vividly one is also showing $9.99. I thought it was $11.99. Oh, with coupon. There we go. Look at all these. Look how many. FPXNB. That's the same thing. Look at these two right here. I know you guys, sorry, that are listening. You can't see what I'm talking about, but there's vividly two 
2-pack and FPXNB 2-pack. They are the exact same towel, both selling for $9.99 because they have to. They're, it's the same thing. Like they are in a price war. Same with this other one, XGUNION 3-pack. Ooh, actually that one's maybe a slightly better value because it's also $9.99, slightly better value. But all these like dinky little brands here that are just selling the plain golf towel, they're all just in a massive price war, all trying to get the same low quality customer to purchase their three back of golf towels. Let's talk about this like downstream, right? After the purchase. Okay. Let's say you do, you do get someone to purchase your plain, your plain Jane golf towel, right? That you launched in five to seven days. Who's going to leave a review for that? You know, I'm not. If you're buying a plain two pack of golf towels for nine bucks, the only purpose you have is like, I just need a golf towel. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it's nice or expensive. I just need one for my bag. So I'm just buying the cheapest one out there that they have. I don't care anything about the design, the quality, the brand, whatever, nothing. I don't want it to say Titleist golf. I don't care what it says on it. Do you think that person is going to take the time to write you a review? Now, I know you might see here. Well, Andy, look, there's reviews on these listings. Okay. Like this guy here has 54 reviews. Another one has, this one has 1000 reviews, but to get 1000 reviews, he's probably been selling for a few years and he's probably sold thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of units just to get those reviews. Is anyone actually reading those reviews? Probably not. Do people actually care about these reviews? Probably not. So if you thought to yourself, okay, I'm going to go sell this plain Jane two pack of golf towels. There's already just on page one, there's like six, seven, eight brands already selling the exact same thing for $9.99. So unless you come in and decide to sell for $8.99, you are not going to get very many sales. You're not, you're not going to get very many sales. These people already have an established listing. They already have, you know, some, some reviews, right? They're 500 reviews, 600 reviews. They already have reviews. You have no reviews or you might have five. You might get your first 10, but it's going to be such a grind to get that. And you're adding no value to the golf towel market. What value are you adding? You're selling the exact same thing everyone else is selling. Now you might say, well, Andy, my brand name is a cute brand. Well, okay. Unless we're pretending, remember, we're pretending that you like didn't do any branding. The only option you have is to offer a lower price. And as soon as you offer a lower price, these other brands are going to offer a lower price. They're just going to undercut you. She so might come on and sell. Okay. Well, Andy, I'm going to sell for $7.99. Okay, great. Sell for $7.99. Tell me how much money you actually make from your business. <laughs> like once, once fees and shipping and everything is accounted for, if you're trying to sell, it was a dollar 75 per towel. So if you're selling two towels, you're basically almost a four bucks right there. Like forget the shipping, forget the Amazon fees, forget the FBA fee. You can't sell for $7.99. You can't, you cannot, it, you will not make profit. You're going to have to run ads. No one's going to, you're not going to show up on page one. Are you kidding me? You're going to have to run ads. You're going to lose so much money. You're just going to be a charity, a golf towel charity for Jeff Bezos and family. And guys, I know this is like a long winded example with the golf towel, but I see people literally do this exact same thing over and over and over where I've reviewed listings. I've looked at photos. I've looked at products. I've looked at design, everything. And I'm just like, what value is this bringing to the customer? Why would someone buy your product? And a lot of times people legitimately, it is scary, but people legitimately cannot answer that question. And the thing that's scary to to me about that is they can't answer this question and they're already selling on Amazon. Their products are already at Amazon. They've already sent a thousand units, 500 units to Amazon, right? I'm reviewing their listing. Like they are, they're up and selling actively. Now, the reason I'm reviewing their listing is because they're probably not getting very many sales or they're losing a lot of money on ads. Things aren't going well for them. So that's why it's scary. It's like you got to this point where you've already ordered inventory. You sent some supplier thousands of dollars to order stuff. You spent money on your photos and done all this. And you still can't tell me what value the customer is getting by buying your product. That's a big, big problem. And that's the reason why you're, you're struggling. That's the reason why you're not growing. You are providing no value to your marketplace, to your category, right? Whatever you're selling in to the customer. What value are you bringing to this market? Golf, golf towels, home and kitchen, baby, pets, toys, automotive, sports, outdoors, like whatever category, whatever brand, whatever niche you're in. What value are you bringing to the market? Please do not spend a dollar from a supplier. This goes for samples too. Do not order one sample until you can answer that question. If you cannot answer how you're bringing value to your market, to your ideal customer, you're screwed. You're screwed. You are not going to do well. Here's another important topic that I wanted to cover in today's podcast episode. This is one of those where I get kind of fired up, right? Because I just want you to, I just, I just don't want you to 
have like unrealistic expectations. This is not 2014, guys. This is not 2014. Ignore all the Instagram ads that you're seeing from people saying, look how easy it is to start an Amazon business. Go to Alibaba, find this, turn around, sell it for this and make a ton of money. It is not. That is over. That is over. That was 2014 Amazon. Those days are gone. There are 2 million sellers on Amazon. If you want to be good, you have to be great. You, you can't just like half-heartedly like put forth some little dinky effort and expect that, oh yeah, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a six figure income. I'm going to make a million dollar brand with this. No, you're not. Unless you execute higher than everyone else in your category and in your niche. So let's talk about the value thing, because the most common answer I get when I ask people, if you know, when I ask them, Hey, what, Okay, I look at your listing. I give some feedback. What I say, what value are you bringing to your ideal customer or your market? Because I'll tell, I've told people flat out before, like stone cold to their face, I would not buy your product because it looks no different than A, B, C competitor right here in the search results. And it's kind of like, it feels like you're getting like punched in the face, but I'm just being real with you. I look at someone's product, like, I'll be honest with you, I would not buy this because I can see X Gunyan or FPXNB Chinese brand that literally is selling the exact same thing you're selling and they're selling it for half the price. And they're like, well, Andy, I'm selling for a premium price because I'm a premium brand, right? That's what you talk about on your podcast. Like be premium, be a premium brand, be a premium product. So like, so I'm, I'm, I'm a premium brand. And then like <laughs> my answer, I mean, this is going to sound kind of sassy, but it's like, I've never heard of your brand. Why is your brand premium? Like, yeah, these other ones, FP, XNB here, Golf Towel and Vividly and X Gunyan Golf Towel. They're all selling the same generic golf towel. There's no design. There's no logo. There's nothing. It's just a plain golf towel. And so then, you know, the, the person I'm talking to will say, well, I've got my brand name on there. And they do like a lot of cases, they'll have like a little logo printed on it or something. Right. So so basically they're selling the X Gunyan Golf Towel here. Or let me pull it up back up here on Alibaba. They're selling this this little generic dollar seventy five golf towel from um, Hebei Aulioha Import and Export Co. from China. They're selling that golf towel, but they slap their brand name on it. So in the corner of the towel, it has a little logo, cute little logo of their brand name. They say, well, and again, remember they say, well, Andy, I'm different from these other you know Amazon competitors right here. I'm different because I got a brand, and I'm like, I've never heard of your brand. You're trying to sell this two pack of, go of golf towels, right? Vividly is nine ninety nine, FPXNB nine ninety nine, X Gunyan nine ninety nine. You're trying to sell for nineteen ninety nine. The same golf towel and, and your justification for selling it for $19.99 because that's what gives you a good 30%, 40% profit margin, right? You're doing everything I told you, right? In the podcast, like, oh, I got to get a good profit margin. Okay, so what price can I sell that? Okay, $19.99, I can make 40% margin. Sweet, I got a business. You're like, well, I got a brand. Ain't nobody heard of your brand. Not to mention, nobody cares about your brand. And again, that sounds like a big just punch in the face, but I'm just being real with you. Think about this, guys. This is going to save you thousands of dollars, wasted dollars starting a business and a brand that makes you no money. Just because you slap a logo on something does not make it premium. Just because you came up with a catchy brand name and a really pretty logo does not make something premium. Most people, guys, most people have never heard of your brand. Guys, we've been selling on Amazon for four years now, multiple millions of dollars in sales for our products on Amazon. Still to this day, 95% of our sales come from people who have never heard of our brand, which goes to show people really don't care about your brand as much as you think they do. That's not to say that branding is not important. Branding is the way. You need to build a brand. You need to focus on brand. You need to build that reputation if you really want to survive you know, the gauntlet, the long term. But when you're just starting out and after you've been selling for four or five years, there are still a lot of people who have never heard of your brand. And if they've never heard of your brand, they don't care about your brand. They don't care. They don't understand. They don't understand what your brand equity is. Think about it in the, in the world of Nike. You have heard of Nike. I'd be willing to bet money if you're listening to this podcast episode. You obviously have a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, if you can afford a smartphone to listen to podcast episodes, you've heard of Nike. Like that's the bottom line. The people who have not heard of Nike are living in third world countries, most likely. And let's be honest, most of them probably have heard of Nike because they're probably, you know, uh, soccer, like soccer is a worldwide global sport. A lot of people, even in third world countries, watch soccer. They see Nike a lot. Nike is a global brand, let's be honest. But there are people out there, guys, in the world who have no idea what Nike is. No idea. I think of like some small village in Africa, probably. They've probably never heard of Nike. So if they 
and this is maybe not the greatest example talking about some small village in Africa, but like, let's pretend like, let's pretend you gave, you gave someone in Africa a trip to the United States, right? Someone from one of these little villages, you bought him a plane ticket, you flew him to the United States and you took him to the mall and you handed him a hundred dollars and you said, go shopping for shirts, clothing. And you took him in like, I don't know, Macy's or Dillard's like a store that carries a lot of different brands. They could care less about the swoosh, the Nike on the shirt. If they have no, if they've never heard of that brand, they don't care to them. That's not like, le- that means nothing. It's just a little icon on a shirt. It's a little piece of art. It has no equity, no value to that person because they've never heard of Nike. Nike is only valuable to us as Americans because of the status symbol that it represents and maybe the quality and stuff that it represents as well, right? Because we we know that, okay, maybe a Nike shirt's a little bit higher quality than like, you know, a generic Walmart shirt. But really it's status. That's what Nike has built over the last 40, 50 years now is they built a status symbol. You have not built a status symbol for your brand. You are not Nike yet. I mean, you could, you know, someday, never say never, but you're not Nike right now. And you have to accept that. You're not Nike. You're not Lululemon. You're not Titleist, right? Whatever the brand is, Yeti, you're not that yet. So if you think that you can slap a logo on something and and think that that is going to justify charging double the price of what your competitors are charging, you're in for serious struggle. You have to add value. You have to add some type of value. Now, here's the thing. The stronger the value that you add to your market, your niche, your customers, the stronger that value is, the easier it is going to be to sell your product and grow your brand. The stronger the value is that you add to your niche, your product line, your category, your customer, the easier it will be to sell sell and grow your brand. So if your value is just like, mm, I'm adding just like a teeny bit of value to this market, it's going to be just like a teeny bit easier to get some sales and a teeny bit easier to grow. But it, like, just like, uh, like, I'm adding just a little bit of value here to this golf towel because I slapped my logo on it and it, my logo's pretty. So people are like, oh, that's a cool logo. What, who, who's logo, what brand is that? I have no idea. Nobody cares. But it's a teeny bit of value. So instead of charging $9.99, you could probably get away with charging $10.99. Again, I know this is like a big like, Andy, stop, stop saying this. Like, is this is a hard truth for a lot of people to hear, especially if you're listening and you're already selling a product on Amazon. But I really, really just want to prevent you from a lot of struggle and heartache and frustration. You have to add value. You have to add value. Otherwise, guys, it's a race to the bottom. If you're not the lowest price on Amazon, you better be the best product. Like that's just the mindset you have to have. If you're not going to do the strategy of like, I'm going to be the absolute lowest price on Amazon, you better be the best product. I'm not saying you have to be the most expensive. You might end up being the most expensive, but you have to have the mindset of I am going to be the best. So if you're going to sell golf towels, be the best golf towel. And let's be honest, guys, like it's a towel, right? Like it's a towel. There's only so much you can do to differentiate a towel. But if I was going to sell plain golf towels, like let's say, okay, people like plain golf towels. That's a thing, right? It doesn't have to have like some big flamboyant design. It can, but let's just say people like plain golf towels. Better have the freaking softest, nicest quality fabric golf towel that the world has ever seen. So that when someone takes a chance on your golf towel, because people will, it's Amazon, you're going to get sales. People decide like, like, hmm, this one looks different. I'm looking at the photos. I'm zooming in. This one looks different. And you say it, like you put it in your title, you're listing and everything, your photos, you drive home the fact that this is the best. Be careful with the words you use. You can't say best, top, number one. You can't say that. But like you're driving home the fact that like this is the nicest towel you can buy. Some people take a chance on you. And guess what? If those people believe you, there's, you know, they agree with you and they open it and they're like, dang, this is the nicest towel I've ever felt in my life. Very, very good chance you get a five-star review. And as soon as you stack up a few five-star reviews, you're going to get some more sales. More people are going to take a chance. And guess what? The more that word gets out that you have made the freaking nicest, softest, best golf towel the world has ever seen, they're going to tell their friends. I would be willing to bet money, guys, if you make a golf towel that is so Gucci, soft, nice, whatever features it has, I guarantee you a good, good percentage of your customers are going to tell their friends about it. They're going to, because it is in our human nature to tell our friends about things that we love and enjoy. We do it all the time. 
every day, whether you think about it or not. We make recommendations for food restaurants to go to, for clothes to buy, for dresses that we like. You know, I'm just thinking about like my wife. My wife is the queen of this. If my wife finds something that she likes or enjoys, she will tell everyone. So if you can get my wife to buy your product, you've got a brand ambassador for the rest of your life. That is in our human nature. We love sharing things that make us happy and we love with other people because when they also feel that like enjoyment, pleasure and love from the product that they end up buying too. And they tell us like, oh my gosh, I bought that golf towel. I love it. That makes you feel so good as a human being. Cause you're like, I helped someone else. I helped someone else feel the joy, the satisfaction, the pleasure of that experience, of that restaurant, of that dish, of that towel, of that dress, of that, whatever it is. So again, like if you just focus on making the best product, it doesn't have to be super complex. It could be a golf towel, but stop going to Alibaba, buying the same golf towel that everyone else is selling, slapping your logo on it, charging double the amount and wondering why no one's buying your towel. You are not Nike. Your brand name is not enough. Now, if you do this for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years like Nike, then yeah, it probably will be enough at some point to where you could throw out a $9.99 golf towel, have your logo on it, and everyone will come running to buy it because now you're Nike. Nike did, wasn't Nike overnight. Like It takes decades to become a Nike or one of you know those brands that you know everyone knows, right? It's, household, it's a household brand. So stop thinking that a funny brand name, a clever brand name, a pretty logo is justification to charge a higher price. It is not. It is not. People just really don't care. If you haven't built up a brand equity yet, which takes time, people don't care. People don't care about your brand name. They don't care about your logo. It, it, it provides no status to them when they're out in public. doesn't matter. Like apparel, right? We could use apparel as the example. And I've looked over a lot of apparel products for other people and they're selling pretty plain generic stuff and they got their logo on it. And it's like, that just, do, it just doesn't matter. People don't care. People are not going. I mean, you get might get some. It's Amazon. Like you can sell dog poop on Amazon. But like if you're really trying to grow and scale and make l- legit money from this, people don't care. They don't care about your logo. They don't care about your brand name because you have no brand equity. You have no status. You have no community, right? That hasn't been built yet. That's going to take time. So when you're starting, guys, if you're starting out, you have to add value. You have to add value in the product itself. It has to be better. It has to be different. The more value, the more different the higher the quality, all that kind of stuff, that justifies charging a higher price. But brand logo alone, it's just not going to do it. It's not going to do it. Now, if you're the very first person to ever sell that product, like you're the first mover, you're like the first one in an you know, emerging market, then yeah, you have like more leverage, right? Because you're, you're the only place. Like if you're the only one who sells X product, yeah, you can probably slap a brand name on it, right? Throw your logo on it, charge 20 bucks and do great. But, but very, very soon the competitors are going to come after you. They're going to come after you and they're going to do it for cheaper. They're going to be willing to sell it for $15. Someone else will come up. They'll be willing to sell it for 10. Another person will come being willing to sell it to nine. And pretty soon you'll be out of business. Unless you've been branding hardcore, right? Unless you've been building your brand, posting on social media, reaching out to influencers and establishing that brand equity, that brand identity, so that when that happens, you you survive. But if you don't do that and you don't have a better value, you're toast. <laughs> you're toast. That is the way it is. That is why people launch products on Amazon and they're like, well, I made a ton of money selling iPhone charging cables back in 20. 15. And then I went out of business because Amazon basics came out because yeah, you're selling a, a charging cable. Nobody cares about your brand. Nobody cares. So there's going to be someone willing to, to sell it for a lower price. And as soon as that happens, you're toast, you're toast. Nobody cares about your premium brand name, iPhone charging cable. And especially on Amazon, guys, we have to understand the market we're selling to. This is Amazon. Why do people come to Amazon? For two reasons. They come to Amazon because they feel like they're going to get it for the best price and they're going to get it delivered the fastest. And it is in that order. It is in that order. Like it or not, that is why people buy it on Amazon. They go to Amazon to get it for the best price. Even name brand stuff, guys. We do it all the time. Me personally, me and my family go to the store. We're shopping, whatever. Like, oh, we see something like, oh, that's really cool. Let me see if I can get it for cheaper on Amazon. Shopping online, see an ad, da, 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 whatever. Oh, wow, that's really nice. Let's, let me see if I can get it for cheaper on Amazon. And I like premium stuff. My wife loves premium stuff. That is why people have prime accounts. That's why we pay the is it 99? I don't even know what it is now. <laughs> $99 a year for a prime membership because we feel like the value of the cost savings we're going to get from buying on Amazon and the speed of delivery is worth that. 
Otherwise, no one would pay $99 a month for Amazon Prime. Maybe for like the video stuff now, like so you can watch Thursday Night Football or whatever, but like that's why. So if you're gonna get into this game of Amazon, understand that. Understand the shipping thing is taken care of. You don't gotta stress about that. Amazon will do its thing. It'll deliver it next day, two days. You don't gotta worry about that. That's all. That's 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 a given for selling on Amazon. What is not a given is your price and value that you're giving your customer. And guys, here's the thing. Just because Amazon is a low price marketplace, like people go to find the lowest price of stuff, that doesn't mean you have to sell a $9 product on Amazon. There's stuff that sells all the time for 150 bucks, 500 bucks, heck, thousands of dollars stuff sells for on Amazon. It's about understanding the value that the customer is getting for the price that they're paying. That's what we're really shopping for. We're shopping for value. Now, again, if it is a generic product where it's like, oh, they're selling it at Walmart. Let me see if I can get it cheaper on Amazon. Right. That's different. That's a, that, that's that's different. That's just us comparing like apples to apples of a generic golf towel on the shelf at Walmart or a generic golf towel on Amazon or like an iPhone charging cable. That's a better example. Go to Walmart. Like, ah, I need a new iPhone charging cable. You see them there at Walmart. Like, oh, these ones are $12.99 for these whatever cables. And so you pull up your phone. You're like, oh, here's the charging cable for $6.99. Boom. Order out the door. Like we've all done that. We've all done that at some point in our lives. That's different. Right. So for, for when we're talking value, you, price to value and it's not like it's your own your own branded products right so people are not they're not seeing it at walmart you're not selling on, on walmart you're not on the shelf at walmart you're not at costco so people are not seeing it right so this is not a comparison of the two platforms for this for our example of our products but what they are looking at if they're shopping for golf towels if they're shopping for t-shirts if they're shopping for mouse pads like whatever it is that they're shopping for on amazon and they see your brand pop up. They are looking for the value. Is it worth that price? Is it worth $9.99 for this two pack of golf towels? Is it worth $21.97 for this six pack of golf towels? That is literally like you just have to get in the mind of the customer. Stop for a second. Stop thinking about your business from your seller perspective. You're in your business mode and just flip the switch and get into your shopping mode as if you were shopping. Guys, I know most of you listening have an Amazon Prime account and you shop on Amazon. So start thinking from that perspective. When you shop on Amazon, what are you looking for when you buy something and use that same thought process and use it to create a product that you're going to sell? Hmm. Okay, let's look here. I'm looking at the photos. I'm looking what looks like good quality from the photos because I'm judging the book by its cover, by its main image. So honestly, like if I'm looking right here, I'm on Amazon for these towels still. This Greens towel brand, this one to me, even though guys, even though like right here at the top at least, even though it has less quality of reviews, 4.6 and has 800 reviews and these other ones have 4.7 and 1.3 and 4.7 and 615. Guys, even though it has a slightly lower review and less reviews and it's way more, I'm still thinking like, ah, I'm still feeling a little bit more inclined to go with this. Guess why? The main image is catching my attention. I'm also getting getting six towels for $21.97. So like with, I don't, I'm not going to take the time to pull out my calculator, but like kind of just judging, I'm like, okay, that's a two pack for 10. So if you double that, that would be four for 20. So this is a better value or these three packs. Okay. Here, here's one over here. Let's say I, I don't want six. Okay. Like six is too much. So I don't want to spend 21 bucks because I don't really need six. I just need a couple. So I look right here and I say, okay, there's two for 10 bucks or there's three for 10 bucks. I'm probably going to buy the three pack for 10 bucks because it's a better value you because I'm not shopping for design or or brand. I don't care. I'm just in the customer mindset. Of, I just want the cheapest thing. Now that's probably not your ideal customer, right? So I'm just using it for example's sake of like, get in the head of your ideal customer. What's the thought process that they're going through? They're making comparisons. They're making a bajillion micro comparisons right here in the search results between you and everything else that's on the search results. Unless they came looking for your brand. If they came and typed in Remy and Rue dog bandanas, they're probably going to buy your bandana. Like, let's be honest. But if they just came typing in dog bandanas or they came typing in golf towels, they're going to be making thousands of micro comparisons every second. Maybe not. I don't know how the brain works. Maybe hundreds, we could say. Hundreds of micro comparisons in the subconscious mind every second between your listing and everyone else's listings around you and on the search results. So you have to think about that. Envision your product in your mind before you ever even sell it in your category. Envision it on the search results. What does your main image look like? What is the price, right? You're doing all your calculations like we teach in the programs. What does the price point look like? Obviously, you're going to have great reviews because you have a great product. What does the design look like of the product? What does the title say? Okay, you look at, you envision all that from the search results and you envision what your listing looks like before you ever even 
buy a product from Alibaba. Now you see it and you look at it from the mind of an ideal customer. Say, okay, what would it take for me to buy that? What needs to be right? What is the, what is the added value need to be? What is the pack? Is it a two pack? Is it a five pack? What is the complimentary products included? What is that price point? Is it $24.95? Is it $19.95? Is it $21.95? At what price point do I say, mm, not worth it? But maybe once I have 500 five-star reviews, yeah, it is worth it. But to get 500 five-star reviews, what does the quality have to be? To where if I open the product as a customer and I see it, what is going to guarantee I get a five-star review? That there's no possible way someone could give me anything other than a five-star review. Like you just have to think about this and envision this and map it out before you ever order inventory from a supplier. If you've already ordered inventory and you put up your listing, and it's too late. It's too late. Do this. Think from the mind of the customer. What is the value that they need to see in order to purchase your product? And the value is a, is, is a rate is kind of a ratio, right? It's a ratio between the product itself, what's included, the quality of it, the design, the, ele the elements, right? All that of the product. And then to the price. Because a plain generic golf towel, like a two pack of plain generic golf towels could be an amazing value at five bucks. We could sell all day, every day. Like you'll sell thousands of them. Now you might not make much money, but at five bucks, it's an incredible value, right? So you have to think about how that price point relates to what the value is that you're adding. This is the reason why Costco makes a bajillion dollars selling wholesale, right? Like bulk. It's just an incredible value. Everything at Costco is more expensive than at Walmart. Everything is. Milk is more expensive. Well, milk might actually be one of the few things that's not. <laughs> But like most stuff is more expensive. Why? Because instead of buying one little bottle jar of mayonnaise, you're buying a three pack of like 32 ounce mayonnaise for 15 bucks. Yeah, $15 is more than $3. But the value of what you're getting for $15 is way, way better at Costco than if you were to buy that same amount of mayonnaise at Walmart. You'd have to buy 10, 10, $3 bottles, jars of mayonnaise from Walmart to get the same amount of mayonnaise for $15 at Costco. That's why Costco is a billion dollar company. They are selling value in bulk. Toilet paper. You go buy a huge thing of toilet paper. What is it? Like 15 bucks, maybe 20 bucks. And you could get like 36 rolls. 12 rolls at Walmart is $7. $7 is less than $15, but 36 rolls of downy premium cotton soft for $18 is a heck of a lot better value than if you wanted to go buy three packs of Downy or not Downy. Why do I keep saying Downy? Uh, whatever the brand is, Ultra Soft from Walmart. It's it's just a big value game. So does Walmart do well? Yes, because they sell the lowest price 12 pack of toilet paper. That is their value. They are the lowest price you can find for that product on the shelf in that moment, right? If you're like, I need toilet paper right freaking now, you're driving to Walmart if you don't have a Costco membership. But if you want the value of the toilet paper and you have four kids, like you're going to Costco. It, 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 that's literally what all this comes down to. What is the value that you are providing? Are you a Walmart? Are you a Costco? Are you a Lululemon? Are you a Bugatti? Like, are you a Rolex? There's all sorts of different ways that you can carve out your value in a marketplace. But if you don't know what that is and your price to value ratio is way off, you're screwed. You're screwed. The reason why Bugatti can sell cars for $2 million is because they're Bugatti. They have the quality. They have the reputation. They have the brand that they've built, the status symbol that they have built over time, decades, right? Same thing with Rolex. They have the quality. They have the design. They have the reputation. They have the status symbol that they've built over decades. But then on the low end, there's the cheap watches at Walmart that are just the lowest price, best value for a $7 watch. So you just have to be careful. You have to know what value you are providing. You can't try to sell a $7 watch for $25,000 like a Rolex because you have a cool logo. <laughs> that That is just not going to work. That's an extreme example, but you can't try to sell a $7 Walmart watch for $50 unless you've established some sort of status symbol with your branding and reputation. And that also takes takes work and time and effort. But from the beginning, it's not going to be that way. So guys, my takeaway, sorry, this was a long episode. Oh my gosh. I kind of got on my rant there for a second. I just really, guys, I just really want you to be successful. Like that's the bottom line. I just really want people to win. I do not like reviewing people's listings and their products and stuff and seeing them, seeing them struggle. I really don't. I don't want that. I want you to win. And so having all the information and really understanding what you need in order to win, that's what I want to give you guys. Like that's what I'm here to give you is all the information that you guys need. And sometimes, Sometimes it's the cold hard facts, guys. 
Sometimes it's tough love, you know? I feel like a parent, like sometimes it, it, you can't just sugarcoat everything. Like it's the same thing with my kids. I have a three and a half year old now who's starting to get kind of sassy. And sometimes you just gotta put your foot down and be like, yo, this is the way it is. I'm sorry you don't like that. I'm sorry you wanna treat. I'm sorry you wanna, you don't wanna go to bed. Like this is what we're doing. This is, this is, this is the way it is. This is how we have to do it. And this is exactly what I'm trying to do for you guys too with your Amazon brands. Like this is the way it is. This is what you have to do if you wanna win. Okay, don't fall victim to all those gimmicks and things telling you that, oh, it's just this easy. It's so easy. It's not. It's not. It's not that. Like, if you want to truly win at the highest level, you got to execute. You got to execute. You got to think about all this stuff and make sure that you're doing things and providing value and, and doing it the best that you possibly can. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Selling on Amazon with Andy Isom. We'll see you in the next episode.